Tel Aviv Airport will probably be your first stop in Israel, and in this video I will be talking about everything you need to know, the location of the airport, which is really convenient, the security procedures, public transportation, and all the little things that will improve your trip to Israel from the start. I will start with a big misconception that many people have. Because of its name in English, TLV Airport, lots of people think that the airport is in Tel Aviv and that they need to start their trip there. Although the letters TLV do stand for Tel Aviv, the airport is not next to the city, but next to the road between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Israel is tiny and the airport is perfectly located right in the middle of the country. The credit for this perfect location goes to the British, by the way. They built it in the 1930s. So if you're from the UK, thanks. Not everything you did while in empire was harmful. In Hebrew, we call the airport Natbag, which stands for Ben Gurion Airport. It is important for you to know that because sometimes the name of the airport is written in English as Natbag or Ben Gurion Airport. Tel Aviv Airport is located about 30 kilometers from Tel Aviv and 55 kilometers from Jerusalem, so about 35 miles. But you don't have to start with the cities. You could opt to go south to the desert, to the Negev Desert. It takes an hour and a half to get there. Or you could go east to the Judean Desert, the area that includes Masada and the Dead Sea. It also takes an hour and a half to get there. Or you could head north to the Galilee, which is a two hours drive away, and dip your toes into the water of the Sea of Galilee. Before I talk about how to get to all of these places, I will first say something about security. If you're flying with one of the Israeli companies, so El Al, Arkia, or Israel, you will go through security at the airport you are flying from. If you're flying with a non-Israeli company, you might be asked some questions when you land and also when you fly back. It's basically a couple of minutes chat with security personnel who will ask you general questions about your trip, where you're coming from, where you're going to stay, what are you going to do in Israel. I can understand why people might find it strange to have somebody asking them personal questions about their trip, but I want you to understand the reasoning behind it. In most countries, security is all about what you are carrying with you. That is why they often pat you down and check your shoes or ask you to open your bags. In Israel, it is not only about your luggage, but about who you are. They ask you questions not because they are bored or because they are interested in your private life, but because they are testing your behavior. They are trying to pick up small hints that might be a sign that you are a potential threat. If you act oddly, it will tell them much more about you than any X-ray machine ever could. They basically ask everyone the same questions. So it is not that they suspect you in particular. We Israelis are very used to it. And sometimes we as Israelis get asked more questions that we would normally expect. It happened to me twice. When I lived in Germany and had everything I needed in Israel as well as in Germany, I once thought to myself, let's see if I can fly with no baggage at all, like nothing, only my passport, cell phone, keys, and wallet. But the Israeli security didn't find it very funny. And I once flew with luggage and was stopped for no reason. A friend told me that because I had like eight kilos of dates, it looked suspicious, as in the machines, they can look like explosive. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm only saying it so you know that the security staff doesn't have anything against you personally. And if you have nothing to worry about, then don't worry about it. Now, because the security staff may be the first Israelis you have ever encountered in, in your life, there is something I want to tell you about Israelis. We are very direct. And I think that Israelis see politeness as something called, as an unnecessary layer. It is inherent in the language itself. We only use first name when we speak to teachers, policemen, or to the men in the bank. We don't use Mr. and Mrs. And unlike many European languages, Hebrew doesn't have a formal U, like in German or Spanish or Russian. 
You speak to your brother exactly as you would speak to a police officer. A similar point to make is that Israelis will often tell you what they think. Sometimes I think that there is no filter between what Israelis think and what come out of their mouth. It's like, we think it, we say it. I like it, I like people saying what they think, but it can be annoying and a bit rude sometimes. They are, you know, two sides to everything. Once you land, you will have to go through the border inspections. They now have machines that you use to scan your passport and you will get a small ticket. The ticket is very important as this is your visa. You must keep it. First, because this is the law. And second, because as a tourist, you don't pay that. So the hotels need to see it in order to give you a 17% discount. Your passport is not sufficient as there are many Israelis who hold foreign passports. Your passport won't be stamped. And this is because you will have problems in certain Muslim countries if they see that you visited Israel. Israel is a nice country and we don't want you to have any problems when traveling in the future. I say we as if I represent Israel, but I will take credit for the good things, although I don't deserve it. After the border inspection, you will go through the hall where you pick up your luggage. Now, most people immediately go to collect their luggage, but as you go into this hall, you will see a very good information desk that people don't know about and don't use. At this information desk, you can get free maps of Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and a free map of all of Israel. They can mark where your hotel or hostel is, which is really helpful. Once you've got your free maps and your luggage, you can go out into the welcome hall. It can be a bit overwhelming. It's a big place. And here you will find all the services you would expect, like bank, ATMs. By the way, Israelis, like the Americans, use their credit card a lot. So if you have one, do bring it with you. I know that young Europeans sometimes don't have credit cards, only a debit card, but it is really helpful to have one in Israel. In the welcome hall, you have the public transportation booth. Here you can get your RAV card, the public transportation ticket, and charge money onto it. It will make paying for using buses and trains a lot easier. Make sure you check out my RAV card video. Now that we are out of the terminal, let's talk about transportation to various places. It will be boring, but extremely important. The most important thing you need to remember is that in Israel, there is no public transportation from Friday afternoon till Saturday night. This is something that many tourists forget. So no trains and no buses from Friday, usually two hours before sunset, till Saturday, usually three hours after sunset. So in summer, it is really late at night. Taxis do always operate, but again, the taxes are more expensive on the weekends. If you want to get to Tel Aviv or Jerusalem with public transportation, then the train is your most affordable and quickest option. It will cost about $5. There are two trains every hour. I've made two videos about taking the train from the airport to Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Check them out. They are super important. Links will be below. A taxi from the airport to Tel Aviv will cost you 40 to 70 bucks, depending on the exact location and the time of day. A taxi to Jerusalem will cost you 60 to 90 bucks. Now, some taxi drivers will approach you in the waiting hall. Don't go with them as they are scammers who have no intentions of using their taxi meters. If the taxi driver doesn't turn the meter on, then you can be sure that he is going to scam you. Before you get into the cab, ask for the meter to be put on. Let me show you how to get to the official taxi rank. Now, I have received a lot of complaints about the official taxis. If you get scammed by a taxi driver, just know that you're not special. They scam Israelis as well. How can you avoid getting scammed? First, use public transportation more. And second, get a hotel or hostel in a good location where you can walk to most of the sites. Check out my hotel recommendations as I focus on exactly that. I'm talking about it a lot because the people the tourists like the most in Israel are the Israeli tour guides. And by the way, my name is Oren and I'm a tour guide. And the people that tourists complain about the most are taxi drivers. 
You can also take a Nesher taxi to Jerusalem. Nesher taxis run a service of Sherut taxis. A Sherut taxi is basically a 10-seater taxi, and once they get full, they go to Jerusalem and will drop you off at your hostel or hotel. It costs around 60 shekels, so 20 bucks. They have two advantages. They work 24-7, even on weekends and holidays, and they drop you off at your location. Their big disadvantage is the customer service. It's not great, to, to say the least. If you want to get from the airport to Tel Aviv on weekends or Jewish holidays, your only option is a taxi, and you will pay 70 bucks or even more. And for all the Americans who are watching and all the people from Wisconsin, no, there is no Uber in Israel. If you are planning on landing in Israel and getting straight to the Galilee or to the desert, then renting a car is by far your most convenient option. You will find all the big names you know. No special recommendations here. The only important things to know is that not far from the airport, you have road number six, which is a toll road, and the rental companies charge a fee of about 10 bucks extra every time you use the car on a toll road, on top of what you need to pay for the ride itself. This is how the rental companies make most of their money with these fees. So you have a few options here. You can avoid toll roads. If you use Google Maps or Waze, which is the most popular app in Israel, you can choose an alternative route. You can choose to drive on a toll roads only if it is a long drive and it saves you a lot of time, which is what I would do. Another option is to sign up to Road 6 as a member. I would go for this option only if I was renting a car for a long period of time. As Nelly Fortado taught us, all good things come to an end. And after you've seen everything Israel has to offer, you will probably fly back home from Tel Aviv airport. And here there is something else you ought to know. Most flights are from Terminal 3. And the train to Tel Aviv and Jerusalem stops at Terminal 3. But there is also Terminal 1, usually for low-cost flights to Europe, but always check. By the way, if you are flying from Terminal 1 and accidentally went to Terminal 3, or if you are coming with a train, then no worries, there is a free shuttle. But again, it's always better to know beforehand when you are flying from. I would say you should arrive to the airport two, two and a half hours before your flight. That's it. If you have watched this video until now, then it means one of two things. Either you are planning to come to Israel, or you really like my heavy yet beautiful Hebrew accent. Whichever it is, please subscribe and give this video a like. One small click for you, one giant clip for my channel. Check out my videos about transportations. There are loads of important tips in them. And get my digital tours, where you will find all my tips, recommended shops, restaurants, discount codes for accommodation and tours. And the most important thing, all my explanations and insights about the important sites in Israel. See you in the next video. Yalla bye.